بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم everyone Thank you so much for being here. My name is Aliza, and I'm one of the care staff um, from the San Francisco Bay Area office. Uh, some of you know some of our colleagues, and we're going to do introductions in just a little bit. Um, so if we could go ahead and go to the next slide. We're um, opening up our program. Thanks for waiting. Um, and I just want to start out by acknowledging that we are on the land of the Ohlone people. Um, and we acknowledge that they are still here, they still exist, and we respect them and the history of the way that um, land has been taken from indigenous people throughout this country in extremely violent and um, really horrible, you know, systematically violent ways um, over our history. And we were not the first people, um, so it's really critical for us to acknowledge that you know, they were not wiped out. They are still here. And there's resources to learn more about that. Um, so if anyone's interested in that, feel free to raise that later. Um, and why we're here, so I'm here with uh, several of our staff that work um, in the advocacy department of the organization. So uh, people might be familiar that, you know, we have a legal department, we have programs, um, we have our operations people, we have our communications person, our development person, but really a big chunk of our staff capacity goes towards uh, outreach and government relations. So we wanted to use this as an opportunity to both kind of introduce ourselves or reintroduce ourselves to folks and also, um, most importantly, hear from you. Um, so it's an opportunity to just get to know each other, connect, um, tell you a little bit about what we're working on, but the main priority for today is to hear from you on what you see as the major issues in the community, the major needs and challenges um, and opportunities. And the uh, main reason for that is that um, we're embarking on a major amping up of our civic engagement work. Civic engagement meaning voter engagement, census engagement, and we'll talk more about that. But the really important thing to keep in mind is we can't do that work successfully without the community really being engaged and excited and feeling like it's actually responding to some of the things that um, you see in your day-to-day -day lives um, and in the community as really urgent. So does that make sense? Um, how many of you, just show of hands, how many of you have done something like this this year where you went to like a community conversation or a listening session, even if it wasn't by care, just by show of hands? Okay. So maybe a couple of us. Okay. All right. So, so that's just, that's helpful to know, right? Because this is kind of like sort of new territory for a lot of us, which is fine. Um, so just wanted to encourage that this is very informal. So you should feel free to get up, move around, get food. We brought you the food for you to eat, go to the bathroom. Um, and if you have any questions or any comments, like at any point, feel free to just raise your hand and um, we can address those. So um, next slide, please, Mina. Thank you. Um, so this is our agenda. We started a little late, as Muslims usually do, so that was expected. Um, but no problem, and um, we are about to do some introductions, so I'm going to stop talking and we're going to hear from all of us a little bit. Uh, we have a little icebreaker, very low stakes, low pressure, just to kind of warm us up to um, getting into the uh, mode of talking to each other and engaging. And then um, me and my colleague Samina are going to talk a little bit about what exactly the advocacy department kind of does. Um, we're going to have some group conversation. We're going to break up into dyads or triads, so even smaller than we are right now, to really get deep into a few questions that we have for you. And then we're going to bring it back um, to the whole group to close out and um, kind of talk a little bit about some opportunities heading into 2020 of how people who might be interested could get engaged or be more engaged in some of the civic engagement work 
um, that is coming with a new presidential election, which is happening next year. But um, we'll talk about how there's some things that will be starting up in the spring, um, namely because we have two big events happening in March. One is our primary election on March 3rd, and the other one is the US Census, which only happens every 10 years, but it's happening um, this year in beginning in March. So uh, any questions about that? Um, so I wanted to um, start us off with a few guidelines for how we're going to engage today. So I'm going to point to, can everybody see this poster right here? Yeah, OK. So basically, um, these are just some sort of informal rules of engagement that pretty much we probably all relate to in some way, because we've all been in group situations where maybe we didn't feel heard or we didn't feel seen and we didn't feel like our voice was really a part of that um, conversation. So these guidelines are really just to help us all, inshallah, get to the point where we feel that this was a space when we walk away from this space today where everybody who wanted to speak had a chance to speak and everybody felt listened to and it was a really healthy and productive conversation, okay? So um, can I get some volunteers to just read? Maybe we can, let's just do this. Let's just go like one by one and each person takes, thank you, Sakina. Each person just reads one of them. Listen to understand. Does anyone want to like just speak to what that means? What does that mean to you? There's no right answer. Um, just like, just like listen, you know, focus, focus on what they're saying, kind of. Mm -hmm. Focus on what they're saying, try to understand, right? Because sometimes it's really easy for us to be like, but I think this, but that's not the, the point. It, it does matter what you think, but we also want to strive towards understanding what this person means and where they're coming from. Otherwise, this is not really a dialogue. It's just a back and forth. That's what we want to avoid, yeah. Don't overjudge. Don't over. Over judge, yeah. Hold, try to hold back your judgment, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, don't yuck my yum. So what do we think that means? I have no idea. <laughs> it's OK, this is not a test. I, I recently learned this. So don't yuck my yum just means like sometimes someone feels really passionately about something, and this is like their core belief, and they, they this is a point of view that they feel really strongly about. And then we might be like, that's not what I think. But instead of coming you know, at it with judgment and saying, well, I think this, or I disagree with that, and shutting the person down, which can be easy to do, right? I'm sure we've all done it. I have. Um, try to just accept that everybody has their own perspective. So kind of in lines uh, with listen to understand. And then the next one. Land the plane. What does that mean? What do we think that means? I'm not sure. So does anyone else like me here like to talk a lot and kind of go on and on and on? Only me? Oh my god, thank you. <laughs> so land the plane is just a reminder, like if you're flying that plane and you're just talking, 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 what is the point? Like you, you need to land the plane at some point. It's just not safe if you, you know, keep talking. So that's just like a metaphor for try to wrap it up understand that we're only here for you know a certain amount of time and then we need to move on we have other things to do today there's another event after this at three right so realistically we could sit here and talk forever but try to land the plane that's a reminder to myself too and the next one uh, move up move back so um, I'll just explain that real quick that's just you know if you um, notice that you're talking a lot, like frequently, you're talking and then it's quiet and then you're talking again, try to push yourself to move back and just listen. And it's okay for there to be silence and it's okay for other people. It might take them a little longer to engage, that's okay. But just try to be conscious of, well, I've been talking a lot, so I'm just gonna, you know, try to uh, listen a little bit more. And then the next one. Uh, one mic. Does anyone know what that means? Yeah. Don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. Specifically, it means don't interrupt. Like, if someone's talking, don't interrupt. 
try not to interrupt. Pretty straightforward. And then the last one, it's all one. Yeah. What's said here stays here. What's learned here sleeps here. Okay. So this one, um, it's a little bit of a like conceptual thing that uh, there's going to be some things that people might say that they don't really want everyone in the world to know about. So um, I'm not going to be like, oh, well, you know, after today, I'm not going to go out and say, did you know that Samina experienced this? Like, yeah, she was talking all about it. Let me, like, break it down for you. She was here when this happened, and then this is her experience. And, yeah, like, isn't that wild? And, you know, in the meantime, not only did I not get her permission, but also even if, you know, I asked her, she might just feel like that's something that's private and it was something that was a part of this space. It might not be appropriate for people to know in other spaces. So just as a rule of thumb, if there's something personal that someone shares, and you can tell it was something about their personal experience, try not to share it in other spaces. If they want to share it in other spaces, they will, right? We can assume that. Does that make sense? So does anyone have any questions about any of these or have anything that they want to add? Anything else come to mind of the kind of space that we want to have to make this a real dialogue? So I think basically what it comes down to is to be a good listener mm -hmm. and don't be judgmental yeah. and uh, move on. I mean, like you said, land the plane. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so just be considerate of everybody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what we're hoping to demonstrate here um, today by doing this, you know, event, and thank you so much to Brother Munir and MCC East Bay, I should have said that at the beginning, um, is that, you know, as an organization, we do a lot of talking at people where we're like, these are your rights, this is how you exercise them, we're going to train you on how to be an effective bystander, we're going to, you know, teach you some political education, but we really want to balance that with listening. So we're committed to listening it seems like you all taking the time out of a Saturday to be here, you're committed to listening. So this is just some ways to hold each other accountable to exactly that. Thank you so much um, trying to listen more than talk. Okay, thank you everyone for participating. So now we're just going to do a little bit of an overview of some of the work that we do just to help you understand um, more about what brings us here. So I actually wanna hand the mic to Samina to share about our government relations work. Um, um, again, thank you again for coming today. I, as you know, mentioned, it is important um, to hear from you, to hear from the community, you know, because again, we we might be seeing things, um, you know, in other spaces, but we aren't actually living, we're not living your lives. We're not seeing how it's like for you at school or for you at work or, you know, just driving around. We don't see what your day-to-day -day lives are and what are some of the things that are impacting you. So it's important to, to hear that. So that being said, um, I just wanted to share a little bit um, more information about my work. So again, I'm the Government Relations Coordinator for CARE. Um, what I do is that I um, meet regularly with elected officials to share with them about what's happening in the community, um, to share with them some of the experiences uh, what we do every year is that we put together a civil rights report or a legal report of all the cases that we um, have been hearing. So just to take a step back, what our office does is that we provide free legal services to people experiencing any um, Islamophobic discrimination, hate crimes, uh, any school bullying, any FBI harassment, and also we offer immigration services as well. And so um, we put together a legal report every year and every other year we put together a bullying report. And so we hear about how, what, what are your experiences at school? Have you experienced any bullying? Any, um, have you experienced it from your teachers? So what we found, um, and I, I, we have a new report now, so I haven't memorized the numbers, but two years ago we found that 53% of students said that they experienced some form of bullying. And we found that 38% said that they experienced it from their teachers. And 36% of those who wore hijab, they said that it was like inappropriately touched or pulled off. So that data, I use that when I meet with elected officials to share with them what is happening in the community. What are the number of hate crimes that are happening? We document, even if, even if there's a, somebody who yells something out the window, we need to hear from you. Like we need to hear if 
if you've experienced that or if you've had a problem like if somebody was you know bothering you at the grocery store or whatever it's good just for you to let us know by documenting it um, it takes two minutes just to go to our website um, and just to document anyway so going back to what I do, I take that information, I meet with the elected officials, and then also I, legis I try to push for legislation that impact not only the Muslim community, but the greater community as well in terms of civil rights. So to give you some examples, so I work on with elected officials on the city level, the county level, the state level, and the federal level. So and in my territory is in nine Bay Area counties, so I have to drive a lot. <laughs> I end up driving from Santa Rosa or to Salinas, so it's, um, those are the elected officials that I meet with. So some of the, the key pieces of legislation that we've worked on, we've done a lot actually in Oakland. We've done, um, we passed um, the um, a facial recognition ban. Actually, the first facial recognition ban we passed was in San Francisco, um, but we passed a, um, you know, facial recognition ban saying that we should not be using equipment or technology in order to track um, what your faces um, are or to track people based on you know their faces because that technology one is not actually accurate um, you have 38 percent of African-American women that are um, that they're that their mistakes made um, saying that there might be somebody else um, and then also it's a violation of one's privacy. We've passed a number of surveillance ordinances around the Bay Area saying that if the police want to acquire any technology, any surveillance technology, that we have to have a public discussion. We have to have a public dialogue about it and there needs to be some policies put in place as to how to use it. We've passed other bills, an anti-registry bill, the, the saying that no one should be tracked or registered based on their religion, their race, their sexual orientation, um, you know, or whatnot they should not be tracked and so we have we passed that in the state of California. So again there's a number of pieces of legislation that we've been able to pass that impact you, that impact all of us and impact our civil rights. And so um, but what I do and what's what in order to get some of this legislation passed, I bring community members with me to to these meetings um, and then we meet with with different elected officials um, so then we can hear from you and what your experiences are um, we also try to bring out community members to come to some of these hearings like when we had the Berk in Berkeley um, there was a, a council member who was trying to pass a bill or an ordinance that had to deal with one's um, saying that there cannot be any discrimination based on one's um, hairstyles or based on if they're wearing hijab or if like you know a man chooses to wear a beard um, for religious reasons or cultural reasons there should be no discrimination and so we we have been able to pass a lot of these bills and alhamdulillah we got a number of people to come out to berkeley to speak on on this ordinance and, and alhamdulillah that that passed unanimously so so again it's not just about us doing these meetings and us doing these um, the, the the meetings and, and passing this legislation it's about all of us, not just care, all of us need to work together to pass that. So that being said, I wanted to hear a little bit about you. What are some of your, you know, experiences like in the community? What are some of the things that you can say, hmm, you know, I wonder, I wonder if there could be like a bill or an ordinance or something changed, you know, that I see in our community. What would I love to, to see changed? So I kind of want to, you know, like I think I, I talked enough. I just want to turn it over to you guys and hear from you. Because what we're going to do in a little bit is you guys are going to get to talk and reflect more deeply, like, yeah, at, on your own um, and with each other. And then out of that, we're going to have a group debrief, which part of it is that um, we can address that. So no, that's OK. Thank you. So um, and then I just wanted to quickly overview. We have an outreach coordinator whose name is Osama. Um, people might know him. And um, he's our other team member. He was unfortunately not able to be here because he's on vacation. So fortunate for him, but sad for us. But he'll be back very soon. Yeah, he, he's, he's, he's taking a much deserved break. Um, but some of his main responsibilities uh, would be um, he coordinates our Juma outreach. So every single Friday, um, the majority of our staff, if not everybody, is out all across the Bay Area, driving all across the Bay um, to physically be at different massages and um, share resources, be there for people to ask questions um, and to seek any kind of help that they might need. Um, so that's one major thing that Osama coordinates. And then he also looks for different opportunities for 
um, the community to build community with each other. So whether that is Muslims are coordinating different events or um, ways to engage with each other like rallies or demonstrations or meetings um, or non-Muslims who are our friends and allies, he tries to keep an eye out for those opportunities, connect people to them, um, and just try to build the relationship so that people um, feel like they have a voice and that they are not alone and they're working with other people. So the intersection of uh, both Samina and Osama's work is the community. So like Samina was saying, the reason that our work is as impactful as it is is because the community engages in it. Um, and so that's why we are here today is to try to, you know, see how we can better work with you all and be your partners, not just people who serve you, but really work so with you. For that. And then the next step is we're just going to go to um, into our small group breakouts. And uh, this is really, again, the heart of why we're here today is for us all to connect and talk to each other and pull out some key themes of what we're all thinking about. So the um, way we're going to do that is we're going to break out into small groups and uh, we're going to do that in a minute after reviewing the questions that we're going to uh, be answering. But we're going to take probably half an hour um, and just go through with our partners that are in our small group these three questions. Number one, what are the main issues that impact my community? My community, I just want to emphasize let's try to think as locally as possible. So either the East Bay or your city, but try to think um, very like locally because that will generate maybe more specific, you know, ideas. Um, but it's okay if you name issues like Islamophobia that we all know it's a worldwide problem. If that's an issue that's relevant to your community, we should still make note of that. But just um, wanted to clarify because sometimes people say community and then everyone's confused like what does community even mean so we're thinking very locally and then um, the second question is what are the challenges in facing these issues because they wouldn't be issues if there's some challenge in addressing them right so for example homelessness why are there this is literally a question that keeps me up is how has it come to the point that we have not just homelessness but growing homelessness in the bay area to the point that people are living in villages and neighborhoods on the street. What is the challenge in addressing that? There's a number of challenges in addressing that problem. It's not just by coincidence, right? And then the last question is, um, what are some of the ways that we can start to think about how to get involved with each other and with our community to address and take action on these issues? So this is not, we're not gonna sit here today and map out like a campaign strategy and say like, these are the actions that we're gonna take. We don't need to do that all today, but we really need to just break down what are the main issues and challenges that we face. And then at the end, um, Samina and our friend from the census that we'll introduce in a bit, um, or uh, towards the end, we will um, start to think about ways that people can get involved. So does everybody kind of have an idea of what we're doing with the three questions yeah yeah so I th this is what the point of this group conversation is is to pull out like common themes so who wants to share out next so I think uh, one of the main couple issues we talked about was actually like targeting in schools by teachers and things like that just based off sometimes just your name or if you wear a hijab or something like that um, another thing we talked about is like actually going out to the community and creating change and actually voting for elected officials that could make change in community. Um, yeah, that's pretty much kind of the main things we talked about. Um, I believe a, a major issue that affects our community is the image and perception of our community. Um, we're always portrayed as the bad guys in the news. We're always portrayed as terrorists. And we really need to change that. We, uh, we need to, like, this also ties into, like, education as well because... We need to get more and more, you know, Muslim people higher up in politics and, you know, in the societal level to make it easier for the rest of our community. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So not just elected officials, but other positions of leadership. Yeah, just other positions of leadership as well. So, you know, so like, you know, we basically represent the true values of Islam in education as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it's easier for people, you know, to get job easier for Muslim people to get jobs and stuff, less discrimination kind of if we get to the higher positions in society. 
Uh, actually, I just wanted to add to this. Uh, so we we thought that some of the issues which are impacting our communities are gun violence, you know, domestic violence, and uh, also Islamophobia was very important. And uh, in that, uh, you know, uh, peer pressure, when, you know, especially with people trying to conform in the society, because you look different, especially when you're wearing hijab and those kind of things. And uh, we thought that some of the challenges uh, which we could deal with, with would be like uh, volunteering in the community, uh, going to interfaith events, uh, showing just showing up there and uh, just show a good faith. I mean, and the way to uh, combat uh, in uh, Islamophobia would be to uh, you know give the right information because there's lots of misinformation out there. That's what we do. And relationship building and leadership, for sure. And anybody else from either of the other groups? Probably only one or two. That's fine. That yeah, that's perfect. Um, as far as what could be done, and this is a little outside of my area of expertise, but um, challenges would be figuring out how to do a better job organizing in the masjids and organizing the masjids among each other and themselves. Obviously, care is great and appreciated, but we need more. What uh, do you think, like, what's the top of your mind? I know there's different challenges, but what do you think is a good way in which to work with women or among women? Personally, and this, this did come up, is um, the cultural divide between the suburban and inner city mosques mm -hmm. and um, the, the sort of recreation of the discrimination that we're supposed to be combating. It's, I, I don't want to move back too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a organizer. Please uh, Sonic. So uh, I think with the, uh, I think we talked about uh, when the mosques get together, uh, there's too many Indians and enough chief, I mean, too many chiefs and not enough, enough Indians, too many cooks in the kitchen, right? And, um, and so they're, uh, everybody, wants to kind of uh, impart their own ideas there, but not necessarily hear others. Um, so it's it's failed every time we've tried to kind of bring the mosque together because it's just too much. So um, I look at the Mormon church, I look at the Catholic church, and there's a diocese, there's a hierarchical system, but uh, we don't have that. Alhamdulillah, we're a big tent or religion, there's a lot of diversity, but um, sometimes that hurts us as well because we don't have a uniform, unified voice into other communities sometimes and I hear this from a lot of people African American especially they feel very ousted when they go to other communities and people treat them as if they're very ignorant to Islam and maybe they just became Muslim yesterday and they don't know anything oh sister do you pray like I I mean <laughs> you you run into this in I just lived in a Middle Eastern country for 10 years so I just came back so they'll ask, I, you may speak to someone and they'll say oh you're Muslim no, I just dress like this. You know, it's like, uh -huh. <laughs> no, I just, you know, I just want to fit in with you. But it's just, a, it's a common thing, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and you face it by, you're saying Muslims, just to clarify. Yeah, Muslims this is, I'm this talking about within yes. the Muslim community, you know, between, like they said, the divide between suburban and inner city um, massages and... So the, that's that's a you know that's a big issue that we have within our community without even having to go outside of the Muslim community. We have mm -hmm. lots and lots of issues outside of the Muslim community, but we also have a lot of internal issues that we need to deal with. Thank you so much for sharing that personal experience. And what was your name, sister? Because I know you Saida. Saida. Okay, thank you. Saida and uh, Brother Norman are here from Oakland, right? You yes. all are coming from Oakland, so thank you for coming thank so far. You. Can I actually, sorry, one second, hold that thought. Was there another group that didn't get to speak? Okay. Can we, before you share yours? Okay. okay. Yeah, if we could have the youth speak. So uh, another issue we talked about in the youth, especially like in schools, was how uh, racism has become like a norm. It's seen as a joke 
anytime it comes up, it's always seen as a joke. Not only like the people that are being racist, but also the people they're being racist against. Everyone thinks it's a joke. That's how normal it is. And I think if you could like somehow get people to realize that it's not supposed to be a joke, that could really like change things. So real quick recap, um, and Sakina has been making some notes of common themes. Thank you all so much for sharing on that. And it sounds like, you know, what we're talking about is, like Sister Sayida said, a lot of the challenges are within. And they're very accessible to us because we don't need to look to, oh, what are other people doing to Muslims? Or what are other people saying about Muslims? Just within our own community, there's opportunities for us to improve. And like you were just saying, what's your name again? Monib. Monib, that, you know, even the people who are facing the prejudice have normalized it and have let it just be treated as a joke. So, and that's not, you know, necessarily their fault, but that is a problem. That's a problem that the people who are experiencing the harm are also normalizing the harm. So, um, I just want to really thank you. I know we could sit here all day and talk forever about all of these issues. I know it's very challenging to pinpoint some common themes, but I just want to say like, this is one of many conversations. We really, inshallah, hope to have more and more frequent events like this, um, especially hearing from people that this is valuable to do on a regular basis and not just one-offs. That is very helpful to hear. And I want to tell Zahra that when I see her on Monday, actually I might see her tomorrow, you know, that this is this is actually adding value to our community is just sitting down and it, talking about things that we all already know what's going on, but actually, could you move to the next slide? Actually um, talking through it. And so in that spirit, I want to give um, Samina and uh, Brother Norman a chance to talk about some different ways to get involved. One thing I'm going to say is that somebody mentioned volunteering, right? Um, so I want to start us off with talking about different opportunities of other ways that you all can continue to get involved, and we're inviting you to lean on us as a resource to get involved, okay? So number one, we are actually currently building um, a volunteer team for CARE that is specifically focused on voter engagement and census engagement and helping people um, be empowered and informed when it comes to voting in the primary, which like I said is in March, and also the other big event in March, which is the US Census, but I'm not gonna talk too much about it because Brother Norman is actually here on behalf of the US Census, so we have a Muslim in leadership because he's literally with the government and working for the census, so I'm so happy. Thank you so much for being here, and Sister Saida. Um, but if you're interested in any of the opportunities that we're about to talk about, we have space over here. Arafa has laid out um, different posters that correspond to the different opportunities. So the one that I just mentioned, which is volunteering to help us call people, go knock on doors, um, different ways that we're going to help engage voters. Um, if you're interested in that, then you would, on your way out before you leave, you would write your name under this poster that I want to help uh, make sure that Muslims and our friends and allies vote and that they fill out their census and I want to learn more about it. You're not committing to it. You're just expressing interest. So I'm not going to follow up with you and say, well, now I have you on my volunteer list. I'm just going to say you are interested in learning more about this, so I wanted to follow up with you. Does that make sense? And then I'm going to turn it over to Samina because um, she has a couple of specific things that she can share about how people can connect to their local elected officials, and then the state uh, legislature. So again, I wanted to thank you for sharing your thoughts and uh, taking part in the, the small group discussions. I think it was really helpful. Um, and I think one of the things that we were discussing in our in our groups is actually a couple opportunities um, in order to get involved and to get engaged. Um, so as I mentioned before, there are you know, pieces of legislation that we've been pushing, whether it be on the city level, the county level, the state level, or the federal level. Now, a lot of you guys talked about school bullying. Um, one of the things that I, um, I wanted to, and I mentioned in our group, is that, alhamdulillah, we were able to pass two bills um, statewide that deal with bullying. But one of the bills that we were not able to get passed was dealing with an ethnic studies program. So that is most likely going to be a bill that we're going to be supporting this upcoming year. So one way in order to um, get involved with this bill or any other pieces of legislation is to 
join me for any of these meetings that I have with elected officials. So if you live in Fremont, if you live in, I mean, wherever you live, I can, I'm planning to be setting up meetings with elected officials to talk about these, um, either these issues or to talk about legislation. And I would love if you guys can join me and you can meet with your local council member, you can meet with your local assembly member, state senator, congress member. I can, I will be setting up those meetings anyway and I would love, and it makes it even more impactful to hear from people like you rather than just to hear from me. Because me, I'm representing an organization, you guys actually live in those cities and this impacts you directly. So that's one way, it's going in for meetings. Second thing is um, we have every single year, and I mentioned it in our group, we have, uh, we send, we, we bring hundreds of people from the Bay Area, actually we bring hundreds of people around California, but our office brings from the Bay Area to Sacramento to meet with your elected officials on one day. So we set up dozens of meetings with elected officials and we try to push these pieces of legislation. So if you guys are interested, please come out and, and take part in it. We, we, we'll take you on a bus. You don't even have to like figure out your transportation. We got food, we got breakfast, lunch, you know, and then uh, different interesting kind of events that happen during the day on the downtime, you know, in between meetings. So we'd love for you, for you to come out. I don't know, how many of you have actually been, how many of you have been to Muslim Day at the Capitol? How many of you have actually ever been to the Capitol? Okay, that's good. At least we got some more people come to the Capitol, but we, but to come collectively, it's a, it's an amazing experience. So we'd love for you to come for that. Um, another thing that would be really helpful is that, you know, oftentimes people think, oh, you know, if I write to my elected official, it's, it's not going to make a difference. Actually, it does make a big difference because sometimes if an elected official is not sure if they're going to vote on, on a bill and they're like, okay, should we do it this way or that way? They'll look to see how many people have called in on the issue and how many people have written in on the issue. Now, if there are more people that have written in on the issue or called in on the issue, you know, that are in favor of it, then those who didn't, they will actually vote for the bill. Sometimes they just don't have time to, or they don't really take the time to analyze it. They'll just go based on public opinion, which is kind of a, it, it works in our favor if we get our people to, to actually go and take part. What we do is that we make it very easy for you. You don't have to draft any, any letter or anything. We have the letter drafted for you. You just put your name and your, your address, email address, and then we send it over to the elected official. So that's one really great way in order to make an impact. Um, so again, these are, these are um, concrete ways for you to make a difference when it comes to government and your legislation. Meeting with elected officials, either in the meetings that I have locally, coming to Sacramento for Muslim Day at the Capitol, or writing into your elected officials, and we already have the template for you um, for that. So I think that's, that's about it. Yeah, so if you're interested, please write your name on, on um, one of the, the boards. Thank you. Thank you, Samina. So Samina does a lot. She's also one person. So even just practically, <laughs> it's helpful to her. Yeah, so even if you're like, I don't care about elected officials. They don't care about me. I, have, I feel some type of way about elected officials. The only way that we can hold them accountable is by showing up or even just there's different ways to speak out. You can write them. You can call them. Last thing, also, when I think I did mention it a little bit earlier, but coming out to hearings, oftentimes, whenever the, so, whenever a city council is trying to vote on an issue, we want to make sure that the room is packed with community members to come out and say, yes, we are in support of this issue. You know, like the hijab bill. There's another one that I'm working on. It has to do with um, the militarization of our Oakland Police Department. You know, that they're using military equipment against civilian populations. We, I, I mean, we're not in favor of that, and so we want to make sure we get community members to come out, you know, so then we can put pressure on our elected officials to vote. There's sometimes some elected officials are like, ah, you know, like right now, we're, we're concerned about something in Alameda. We're trying to get people to come out to vote for a surveillance ordinance. We've been told that we need to get community support for that. Otherwise, they're not, they're kind of wavering on that issue. So again, that does make a, a difference. So if you ever want to come out for a hearing, Again, come to a meeting, come to Muslim Day at the Capitol, please contact our office and we'd love to have you take part. And if you have thoughts about how it would be easier for you to participate and how you would like to participate but you're facing challenges, that's also information that Samina really wants to hear. So what we're talking about here today is there's different ways to engage with the political system. Voting, it puts people into office. It, 
it can pass ballot initiatives that will turn into laws or regulations that people in government are carrying out on our behalf that we have said that we prioritize, right? Um, participating with the legislative process and how decision makers make decisions, that's another way. And then I want to um, invite Brother Norman up to share about what the significance is of the census. What is it? Why is it important to us? How can people get involved and potentially even get paid to work with the census? Um, and before I do that, I just want to explain, everybody has a sticky note. Um, and what I'm asking you to do is just before you leave, just write down one plus and one delta, meaning something positive and something you would like to have us consider to change or adjust or add or take out um, from today's experience. So something that was a positive and something that you would um, want us to consider changing. Does that make sense? Just one thing each. Or if you have a lot of thoughts, talk to me. I'll be here. And where you're going to leave these sticky notes, if everybody could just look where um, RFA is pointing back there. Um, that poster on your way out, if you could just leave your sticky note on that poster, that would be great. All right, Brother Norman, thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, these kind of experiences are very, very important because uh, as we discuss things, you know, listening to some of the youngsters, uh, they get it. They understand what's going on, and uh, we need to encourage them to provide their solutions because it's a problem that they will deal with and have to solve. But my purpose here today is to invite you to participate in the census on both levels, as an employee and as a person who's counted. See, everything is political. In this, as you know, in this country, everything is political. Those who say, well, you know, I'm not involved in politics. Well, politics is involved in you. <laughs> it's involved with you on a daily basis, like it or not. You don't have to like it. It's a reality. Everything that's going on internationally, particularly as it concerns uh, Muslims, as you know, we're all terrorists. Uh, and the black ones are something else. Well, whatever. But... Uh, and not real Muslims. But you know, see, there are a lot of things that, that we have to consider. But being counted is very, very important. Because they ask, when, when care, well, see, I regard care as uh, the Muslim NAACP, mm -hmm. essentially serving the same kind of purpose. And uh, that's very important because all of the progress without that kind of leadership and centralized leadership, we don't make it as a community. Those of us in the black community who are Muslim have had to fight on two or three fronts all at the same time. And it's free a lot of people to be Muslim. The hijab problem, I mean, the covering of the head of women has been, I mean, we've had to literally turn out schools, I mean, show up and, and you know, raise hell part of language, but actually do that so that our youngsters didn't get harassed, you know, by teachers and everybody else. So we've had to do that battle. And it's a continuous thing. Like I said, the youngsters get it, and they understand it. Now, the census, the census is one of the few things that's actually required by the Constitution. In fact, it is a crime not to participate in the census, if, they, if the census cares to push it. There have only been two prosecutions in the history of the census, and let me tell you why it was necessary to do that and why the census decided to push it. It is against the law. It's a, it's a first class felony to advocate against participation in the census. And the person that was, that was tried at a newspaper in the Middle, in the Middle West where he was in his paper advertising and encouraging people to boycott the census. And even after, after a decree from the courts continued, said it was part of his freedom of speech. 
Um, so they prosecuted him. Uh, he got a nickel, which means five years in jail, and a $250,000 fine. Uh, they rarely have to do that. And the person, you know, there are three ways normally to participate in the census this time, and they've added a fourth. As it says here, the only way to apply for a job is online. And I like all of you, you have to be 18 and you have to be um, speak English and um, be a citizen. We have, uh, and we're particularly interested in people who have mastered other languages or whose language is their first language. The census comes out, the questionnaire comes out in five languages. English, Spanish, Korean, Chinese, uh, to dollar. That's normal. But our literature comes out in 52 languages, which covers most of the languages, uh, most of the major languages. Just to give you an instance, in, in the city of Oakland, there are two main Chinese languages, Mandarin, Cantonese. And I know of at least 15 Chinese dialects, which without the use of the other language, they would not be able to communicate with each other. So it's very important. And the census, back to the census itself, the census is used as a way of determining a lot of things. First thing, the number of representatives. Say, for instance, California has 53 Congress people. If the count goes down, they could lose representation. If the count goes up, it could gain representation. So it's very important to be counted. Now, when it comes to particular communities, uh, the Muslim community, black communities, and other communities, we get, we get representation and we get influence based on our numbers and in our showing up. So it's very important for us as Muslims to register so that we increase the influence that we have. That's the part. That's the part. And the beauty of it is some of us can even work for the census while doing that. This is my sixth census. I've worked every census since 1960. And I keep coming back because I've realized how important it is. And um, if you're in Alameda County, none of the jobs pay under twenty dollars. Uh, we pay, we're gonna pass out the literature and give you a chance to uh, just take one and pass it. And down. real quick, I just sorry, Brother Norman, I just want to note that even um, if you are a youth, you're eligible to work for the census as long as you turn eighteen by right. the end of this year. Yes. So as long as you will be eighteen by the end of this year, you actually could apply. And yeah. it's, it's really that's flexible, and I'll let him talk more about that, yeah. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that, because that's important. Uh, the jobs, there are major, the, uh, there are clerical jobs in the office, there are management jobs. 90% of the jobs are the jobs in the field, mm -hmm. and we call them numerators. Mm -hmm. uh, the enumerator, actually that term, that, that title, came from the Constitution itself, because the Constitution says that Every year, the government shall enumerate the population. So we call the people who are out working in the field enumerators. Uh, it's important that you not only enroll yourself, you know, apply yourself, but pass the word on. I'll give you a challenge that we have right here. This is in the city of Oakland. Between now and the end of January, we need to hire 1,300 people. Our applicant pool at this point is around 3,500 people. That's not enough to hire 1,300 people from. The reason I say that is because some of them are going to pass the background check. And some of them, by the time we get around to them, will have found other jobs. And uh, some of the classes, when they learn that they've got to go door to door, or learn what the actual job is, People decide that it's not something that they want to do. So in order to hire those 1,300 people, we need an applicant pool somewhere around eight or 9,000 folks. 
So not only, I'll close with this, not only do I encourage you to apply yourself, but encourage your friends. Because all of us know somebody who needs a job. And all of us, in fact, know somebody that we wish would get a job. <laughs> you know, so that we didn't have to support them. You know, so, but uh, just, you know, feel free. I'll be around a while to ask any questions. And you can always reach me at the, uh, if you call the main census line yeah, thank you. and ask for uh, the local office, you'll get me. So I'd like to thank you. Thank you for your time and your attention. And uh, I've really enjoyed this. Thank you, Brother Norman. Can we get a round of applause for Brother Norman? That is so inspiring. How many censuses have you worked with? He's worked with. He's worked on almost seven census. That's seven decades, you all. That's that is commitment. That that is Muslim leadership, and that is giving back to your community. So, even if you can't work with the census, like I said, you have an opportunity to volunteer with CARE or with other groups to help make sure that our communities are counted. It's really a lot at stake. We could lose money for public services. We could lose political representation. It's a big deal. It only happens every 10 years. So again, we had a lot to cover today, but it was really helpful to have Brother Norman join us because we only get this opportunity every 10 years. So we are going to take the time and invest the time to talk about it. For every person who doesn't take part in the census, we can lose up to $10,000 per person who does not take part in the census. So that is, it's really concerning. These are, of course, all, you know, the, the resources that we need to keep our roads, like, and keep our systems uh, running. Yeah, like school lunches, housing, medical services. We should talk about that more. Let's just let's let's connect with Brother Norman because the way that it's going, like he's saying, they don't have enough people. So I I do wonder: is there any opportunity for you to get some kind of compensation? Yeah, even if you turn 18 after. It's just, it's a government job, so sometimes there's like really technical requirements. So um, I just want to go ahead and close with a quick um, couple of things. So one thing is, again, if you are interested in learning more about any of the opportunities we just talked about, where can you indicate your interest? On one of these posters over here in the corner, there's a marker down there. And then where can you put your little evaluation sticky note? on the poster on your way out. And if possible, I think it would be really great to get a group picture before we leave. So if you'd like to be a part of that, maybe we could gather up here. But can we just go around real quick and just say one word that's like on our, um, in our minds right now as we're getting ready to leave? It could be anything. So I'm just going to start. Inspired. Informed. Unity. Beneficial. Educated. Influenced. Empowered. Unity. Eye-opening feedback. Learning. Helpful. Engaged. Informed. Encouraged. Action. Helpful. Common platform. Pumped. <laughs> okay, thank you guys. So um, let's give ourselves a round of applause for being here today and being committed to each other and our community.